Well, hey, this is Mr. Pearson, and we are going to discuss bar graphs as a way to collect and organize our data. Now, a bar graph is a graph that uses bars, hence the name, to, of different lengths to compare data. And the bars in a bar graph, they can be vertical, meaning going up and down, or they can be horizontal, meaning they go from side to side. Either way, they help to represent the, the data that we're trying to give to people, and it's an easy way to organize and, and display that data. Now, a bar graph, it has some pretty important items, and all bar graphs need to have these parts. So when you're making a bar graph, make sure you include these things. First off, you need to have a title. When people look at your graph, they need to know what information are you trying to give them. In this particular case, this graph that we have here, we're talking about absent students. So that's, that's the title right here. This title is called absent students. We also need to have a scale. Those are the numbers that, depending on if it's a horizontal or vertical, will depend on where they are. That tells you what each one of these lines is worth. So in this particular case, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up. So each line is going to be worth one student. And we need to have labels. Uh, these bars wouldn't mean very much if we didn't have labels on them to tell us what each one is worth. Now, because we're talking about absent students, obviously something for school, we're going to label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so that each per or the people looking at your graph know what each one of those bars mean. We also can put some labels to tell us the day, and over here, what these numbers represent, number of students. So you got to make sure you have a title, make sure you have scale, and make sure you have your labels. The scale on a bar graph is very important. Sometimes it counts by one, just like in the example we just saw, but other times the scale can be two, it can be five, it can be ten, or even more. Always look at the scale carefully. Okay, so here we have a graph. Take a moment to, to look at that, and there are some questions uh, that go along with it. So you're going to use this graph here to answer the questions that are going to appear. First question is, what is the title of this graph? Take a look at the graph, pause the video for a second, and then go ahead and jot that down on a piece of paper. What is the title of this graph? Second question, what is the most favorite topping? Based on this graph, which topping do students like the most? How many more people like mushrooms than like peppers? So find the bar for mushrooms, find out how much that's worth, find the bar for peppers and how much that one's worth, and then go ahead and do the math there. And then, and this is a tough one, how many students voted in this survey? How many of the students voted? Go ahead and pause and figure out the answer, and then go ahead and jot that down. Okay, what is the title of this graph? Well, if we look up here, here's the title. It is favorite pizza toppings. I like pizza. My favorite topping happens to be spinach. But uh, that's just me. I wasn't part of the survey, I guess. But the title of this graph is pizza toppings. What is the most favorite topping? Well, we're going to look and we're going to find the biggest bar. And uh, obviously the biggest bar here goes for pepperoni. It had 12 votes. 12 votes makes it the pepperoni the most favorite topping. How many more people like mushrooms than like peppers? Well, if we look here, six people like mushrooms. Mr. Pearson happened to like mushrooms as well. And only three people voted for peppers. So we're going to take this number here, six, and we're going to subtract three from it. Six minus three means three more people like mushrooms than like peppers. And how many students voted in the survey? Well, we're going to find out how much each one of these bars is worth. We're going to add those numbers together. So we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like extra cheese, plus 12 like pepperoni, so that is 17, plus 6 more like mushrooms, 17 plus 6 is 23, and then 3 people like peppers, so 23 plus 3 would be 26. How many students voted in the survey? 26 students. All right, here's another graph. This one is a horizontal graph. 
and we have some questions for you. First question is, what is the title of this graph? So take a good look, figure out what the title of the graph is. Second, which player scored the most goals of Chelsea, Maurice, Landon, or Ahmed? Which student scored, or which player scored the most goals? How many goals did Maurice and Chelsea score together? How many did they score together? And how many goals were scored in all by this team? All right, so let's take a look and we'll answer these questions. What is the title of this graph? Up here at the top where it should be, the number of goals scored. The title of this graph is number of goals scored. Second question, which player scored the most goals? Well, again, we're going to look for the biggest bar. And that happens to be this green one here for Landon. Landon scored 10 goals because he has the longest bar. All right. Now, this scale, if you notice, it counts by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right. Third question. How many goals did Maurice and Chelsea score together? So let's find Chelsea. She scored 2, 4, 6, 8. Hers goes right there to that line. Maurice scored 2, 4, 6, 8, and then his goes halfway between the 8 and the 10. So that would mean that he scored 9 because it goes halfway. So 8 plus 9 would give them, uh, the two of them, Maurice and Chelsea, 17 goals between the two of them. And then the last question, how many goals were scored in all by this team? So we're going to figure this out. We're going to add up all of these. We have 8 plus 9. We just talked about that is 17. Landon scored 10. So 17 plus 10 is 27. And Ahmed scored 6. So 27 plus 6 would give us 33 goals. That's a, that's a good number of goals for them to have scored. All right, again, remember, a bar graph is a graph that uses bars of different lengths, like we saw, to compare data. The bars in a bar graph can be vertical, going up and down, or they can be horizontal. Again, my name is uh, Mr. Pearson. I hope you enjoyed learning about bar graphs with me. Go on out there and show everyone what you learned. We'll see you next time.